On this worksheet, we're going to go through the process of naming alkene molecules and also alkyne molecules. An alkene molecule is one that has a carbon-carbon double bond, and an alkyne is one that has a carbon-carbon triple bond. When we're naming these molecules, we're going to follow pretty much the same rules that we would use for naming alkanes. We want to find the longest carbon chain in the molecule, but this time we want to make sure that the longest carbon chain is one that contains the double bond or the triple bond. So it might not necessarily be the longest carbon chain in the whole entire molecule. It is going to be the longest chain that includes that double or triple bond. Let's practice that on these first two examples. Um, you know, they don't have any branches, so it's pretty straightforward. The longest carbon chain has to include the double bond, and then we'll just, you know, kind of carry on with the rest of the molecule. Over here, the longest carbon chain has to include the double bond, and it's going to be everything to the left and also everything to the right like that. Um, next thing that we do, just like with naming alkanes, we want to number the carbon chain and we want to start at the end that's closest to the double bond or triple bond. And this is going to override the rule that we had before where we were starting at the end closest to the branch. So when we're numbering our carbon chain for an alkene or an alkyne, we want to start at the end closest to the double or triple bond even if that is far away from any branch that might be present on the molecule. So let's number um, these two guys down here, starting at the end, closest to the double bond. I'm actually going to erase the highlighting. Um, for the first molecule, that means we want to number it from the left side to the right side. And for the second molecule, because the double bond is closer to the right-hand side, we want to number from right to left, like that. Once we get the carbon chain numbered, we'll locate and name substituents just like we did with alkanes. Um, so we want to put them in alphabetical order and name them. We don't have any substituents on these molecules, so we won't be doing that step. Once we've got all of our substituents named, then we're ready to name the parent chain. This is going to involve naming and locating the double bond in the molecule. So the first thing that we have to do is locate the position of the double bond or the triple bond if we have one. And the location that we use is the starting point of the double bond. So the double bond spans two carbon atoms or triple bond, spans two carbon atoms, and we, the location that we give it is the, the first number, the smaller number of the two carbon atoms. So we're going to use the smaller number for the location. Meaning, again, if our double bond is going between carbons number one and carbon number two, we're going to use one as its location. Or if the double bond is going between two and three, we're going to use two, the smaller number, we're going to use two as its location. Um, so this guy's double bond is located on carbon number one. And this guy's double bond is located on carbon number two. To indicate that this is an alkene, not an alkane, we're going to change the ending of the molecule's name. So we're going to change the ending of the name to ene, from ene to ene, uh, if it's a double bond, or we're going to change it to ine if it's a triple bond. So this is a four carbon molecule, which we would call butane if it was all single bonds. But since there's a double bond present, we're going to drop that ane and we're going to replace it with ene. And that is going to tell us that that changing of the ending to ene is what tells us that there's a double bond in the molecule. So this molecule's name is 1-butene with this ene part letting us know that there's a double bond. And the 1 is letting us know where the double bond is located. For this guy over here, a 5-carbon molecule, we would normally call it pentane. But since there's a double bond, we're going to drop that ane, we're going to replace it with ene, and this molecule's name is going to be 2-pentene. Again, with the ene letting us know that there's a double bond, and 2 is letting us know where the double bond is located. So let's try these next two examples right here. We want to find the longest 
carbon chain, which is this right here. Now, um, with triple bonds, it is kind of tricky to see all of the carbon atoms in triple bonds because of the way that the triple bond is flattened out. Conventionally, it's flattened out in line structure. So in this molecule, the carbon atoms are located right here like that. We want to number this carbon chain at starting at the end closest to the triple bond. So it's going to be like this. We want to locate the triple bond using the smaller number. So that means this triple bond is located at carbon number two. It's a six carbon chain, which we would call a hexane, but this is a alkyne. So instead of saying hexane, we say hexine. Here's another one. Here's our carbons. We want to start in the ring, we want to start numbering as close as possible to the triple bond. So that's, you know, we could choose either this guy or this guy is going to be carbon number one. And then we're going to continue around the ring like that. Um, this is a cyclo hex, not an ane, but an ine. And that goofy rule that we learned, if there's only one thing on a cyclic molecule, you don't say one at the beginning of the name. Um, this is not a thing that's on the molecule. It's a thing that's in the molecule, but the, the rule is still the same. If there's only one feature to a cyclic molecule, you're not allowed to say one at the beginning of the name. So here's um, some, now we're getting into some examples with branches. Here's our longest carbon chain number starting at the end closest to the double bond. Uh, even though that means that we're starting as far away as possible from our branch, our chlorine, we still want to, you know, give priority to the double bond and make sure that it's getting the smallest possible number. We're going to name our branch. It is 5-chloro. Then we want to locate the position of our double bond using the smaller of the two numbers and then say the molecule's name. It is a pent, not a pentane, but a pentene, en, because it has a carbon-carbon double bond. Here is our next example. Again, we've got those tricky triple bonds, makes it a little bit difficult to see our carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five. We have a branch in this molecule on carbon number four. We have a methyl group. There uh, is a triple bond. The triple bond is located on carbon number two because we're using the smaller of the two numbers, two versus three. It's a five carbon molecule, which is a pent, not a pentane, but a pentine. Pentine, the Y, is letting us know that we have a triple bond. And then last but not least, we have some cyclics with branches. So we're getting all kinds of exciting here. We've got one, two, three, four, five carbon. We want to choose, when we're numbering this, we want to choose either this carbon or this carbon to be carbon number one. Um, so this one might be a little bit tricky. Like let's say that we choose this carbon right here to be carbon number one. Once we've identified carbon number one, we have to continue the numbering across that double bond. So we have to number the double bond one, two. We're not allowed to go like this, one, two. The double bond has to go across the carbons, one, two, which then makes the rest of the molecule number like that. Now, our other option for numbering, which I'm going to do inside the ring, we could call this guy carbon number one, possibly, which would mean that this guy next to it would have to be number two, because the double bond has to be one, two, and then we'd go three, four, five, like that. No matter which set of numbers we use, the pink ones or the blue ones, the double bond is going to be located on carbon number one. So in that regard, you know, it's kind of like a tie. And when we have a tie, like no matter which set of numbers we use, the double bond is on number one, then what we want to do is consider, okay, what about our branch? How are the numbers looking for our branch? If we use the pink numbers, the branch is going to be located on three. If we use the blue numbers, the branch is going to be located on five. And in general, our our goal is to use the smallest numbers possible. So we're going to go with the pink numbers because that puts the branch on number three. So let's locate our branch on number three. Our branch is the methyl. Then let's say the location of our double bond. The double bond is on carbon number one. And then our molecule, which is a cyclopentene because it has a double bond. 
One more example over here. Um, again, we've got a double bond and we've got two branches on this molecule in a cyclic. So one of our options would be e either one of these carbons could be carbon number one. I'm going to choose one option. We're going to make this guy carbon number one, which means this has to be carbon number two, again, because the double bond has to span from carbon number one to carbon number two. So there's one set of numbers, one, two, three, four. The other option is if we made this guy our carbon number one, so that would be a one right here, that would make this guy a two, that would make this guy a three, and this guy a four. And since it's a tie with regards to the double bond, the double bond starts on number one, or the double bond starts on number one, uh, what we're going to do now is look at our branches. What are their numbers look like? When we use the pink numbering system, the bromos are on one and two. When we use the blue numbering system, the bromos are on one and two. It is literally just a full-blown tie, which means it doesn't matter which set of numbers we use. I'm just going to use the pink numbers again. Um, so let's locate and name our branches. We have two identical branches. We have two bromos, which means we get to say dibromo. Even though we have two of them, and we're saying die, we still need to in, uh, indicate the location of each one of them. One comma two. One's on number one, one's on number two. One, two dibromo, cyclo. This is a four carbon chain, so it's a but uh, in. But in. I'm coming back because as soon as I stopped recording, I realized that I forgot to locate the double bond in the ring. One, two, dibromo, one, cyclobutene. Now the name is done.